Suppose you wanted to move something heavy. You could make your work easier if you used wheels on an axle. Wheels and axles make it possible for things to roll. They reduce friction, so you don't have to drag heavy things from place to place. You can push or pull them along. But wheels and axles can do more than cut down friction. You can use them as simple machines. You can attach two wheels to the same axle this way, so that when one wheel turns the axle, the axle turns the other wheel. You just apply a force to the edge of one wheel to make everything turn. Each time the first wheel turns around once, so does the axle, and so does the other wheel. The second wheel turns with the same amount of force that you apply to the first wheel. So this machine transfers a force from one place to another. But if the two wheels are different sizes, much more happens. Here's a machine with two different sized wheels on the same axle, or with two things that act like wheels. This is one wheel, of course. The second wheel is here, the circle made by the pedals as they go around. The circle acts like a wheel. You apply a force to the pedals. Through these arms, the pedals make the axle turn, and the axle makes the large wheel turn. When one wheel makes one complete revolution, so does the other wheel. This is the distance your foot moves in one revolution, the circumference of the small wheel. But this, the circumference of the large wheel, is the distance you roll forward in one revolution, much farther than your foot moves. If the circumference of this wheel is twice the circumference of this wheel, you roll forward twice as far as you move the pedal. So this machine multiplies your distance by two. If you wanted to roll forward more distance each time the pedals go around, you could do it by making the large wheel larger. Now the circumference of this wheel is three times the circumference of this wheel. And with each revolution, you roll forward three times the distance your feet move. But this machine doesn't only multiply your distance, it also multiplies your speed. Speed is distance per unit time. The more distance something goes in an amount of time, the more speed it has. Your feet go this far in, say, one second. But you roll forward three times as far in the same second. So you have to roll forward three times as fast. So when this machine increases your distance, it also increases your speed. The faster you can make a grinding wheel rotate, the more grinding you can do. So you use a large wheel that is much larger than the small one. When you make this wheel turn, the outer edge of this one travels much farther and much faster. <coughs> So, as you can see, the larger one wheel is compared to another on a wheel and axle machine, the more that machine can multiply both your distance and your speed. But sometimes you're not interested in getting either distance or speed. You want to multiply force instead. To do that, you apply your force to the larger of the two wheels on the same axle, as you do when you pedal a bicycle. The pedals go around in a circle this large in order to turn a sprocket that's smaller this large. Suppose that this wheel is twice the circumference of this wheel. Then with each revolution, your foot moves twice as far as the sprocket moves. But the sprocket moves with twice the force that you apply to the pedal to power the bicycle. So you make a trade. This machine produces twice as much force as you put into it, but it moves that force only half the distance that you move your feet. The smaller this wheel is, the greater the trade is. You get more force, 
but less distance. And because you get less distance, you also get less speed. What if the smaller wheel on a wheel and axle machine were even smaller, the size of the axle, so that the axle itself is really acting as the second wheel? Then a point on it would move only this distance, but with very great force. Axles acting as wheels are often used to wind up ropes or cables in order to pull things or lift things. <laughs> With some machines, you turn an axle by turning a rather small wheel. When you need to apply more force to an axle, however, the wheel you turn is usually larger. So with this machine, you get a lot of force because you turn a great distance. This machine did the opposite. With it, you could get this edge to turn a great distance and with a lot of speed. Does this mean you needed to apply a lot of force here? Yes, it does. With wheel and axle machines, you always trade force for distance, or distance for force. And because you always trade one for the other, you can't multiply both force and distance at the same time. Sometimes we want a wheel on one axle to turn a wheel on a different axle. One way to do this is to connect them with a belt. If the belted wheels are the same size, they both turn at the same speed, just as two wheels do if they're on the same axle. But if they're different sizes, one of them turns faster than the other. The circumference of this wheel is three times the circumference of this one. This is how far the belt moves when the large wheel revolves once. But notice what happens to the small wheel with one-third the circumference while the belt moves that same distance. It revolves three times. So the moving belt causes the small wheel to turn three times as fast as the large wheel. We measure these speeds differently than before. In revolutions per unit time, usually revolutions per minute, or RPMs. This wheel is turning at about 60 revolutions per minute, and this one is turning at 3 times 60, or 180 revolutions per minute. There's a trade here, too. This wheel turns 3 times as fast, but in order to get it to turn with a certain amount of force, you have to apply 3 times that force to the other wheel. You trade force to get speed. But you don't often find just two wheels belted together. Usually, each wheel is on an axle with another wheel. So each one is really part of a separate wheel and axle machine. When these two machines are connected by a belt, there are really three wheel and axle machines working together. This is one, two wheels on the same axle. This is one, two wheels belted together. And this is one, two wheels on the same axle. The combination of all three produces a lot of speed here. A bicycle works exactly the same way. First, as you saw, these two wheels are on the same axle. You move the pedals a great distance to apply a great force to this wheel. Then this wheel is connected by a chain to this wheel. The chain works the same way a belt does, except the wheels are sprockets with teeth. The back sprocket is smaller, so it turns faster with more RPMs. Some bicycles have several different sized rear sprockets that you can shift depending on the force and RPMs you want. Finally, the back sprocket is on the same axle as the back wheel, making a wheel and axle machine that works the same way as the grinding wheel. Again, both wheels turn the same number of revolutions per minute. And because this wheel is larger, 
its edge travels much farther with each revolution than the edge of this wheel, making the bicycle roll forward with a lot of speed. Sometimes one toothed wheel turns another toothed wheel, not with a chain, but by interlocking with it. These wheels are gears. Like belted wheels, if the gears are different sizes, they can multiply either force or RPMs. Gears are often used to coordinate machine parts that move at different speeds, like the parts of some clocks. All of these simple machines, two wheels attached to the same axle, two wheels connected by a belt or chain, and gears are really just ways to get one wheel to turn another so that you can get the best combination of force and distance and speed. And you can build or combine wheel and axle machines any way you need to to help you do work.